Hello to all my sensational students. Welcome to Bloom and Grow Education. My name is Meredith Dickinson. In today's English lesson, we are going to be reading David Williams Presents There's a Snake in My School. So we're going to have some fun reading the story and at the end we're going to do a fun little writing activity. Let's get started. There's a snake in my school. Mr. Bright had told all the children in his class it was bring your pet to school day. Everyone rushed into the playground to meet the animals. There was a stupidly cute gerbil, a tiny goldfish, a fat cat, a 100 year old tortoise and a tall dog. Last to arrive, as usual, was a little girl called Miranda. She was riding on the back of an enormous slithery snake. Meet Penelope, my pet python, announced Miranda. On seeing the snake, the other children screamed, Ah! Miranda loved being different. She always stood out at school with her individual take on school uniform, her cartwheels down the corridor, and her funny answers in class. What ended in 1945? 1944? Ha 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 ha! A python is a rather unusual pet, but Miranda and Penelope had so much fun playing together. For the little girl, the snake would pretend to be a scarf, a balloon, a hula hoop, a telescope, and sometimes, when they were both feeling particularly mischievous, a third arm. Come and give her a tickle, encouraged Miranda. But the other children were too scared. Penelope was a python after all, and pythons eat people. All the pets were frightened too. The large dog yanked on his lead, sending his tiny owner flying. The goldfish tried to hide behind some water. The tortoise made a rather slow run for it. The cute gerbil flashed her gnashes and didn't look so cute anymore. The fat cat just carried on napping. Miranda slid down her snake. The little girl tickled her python under the chin and the snake smiled. See, she's very friendly. Soon everyone was gathered around to marvel at Penelope. The t python loved the attention and made a climbing frame for the children to climb on, steps for them to step up, and a fireman's pole for them to slide back down. Penelope even helped the children learn their numbers, although she could only go up to nine. This was turning out to be the best school day ever. But then, Miss Bloat, the headmistress, thundered into the playground. There's a snake in my school, she shouted. Miss Bloat didn't like animals much, or children. It's bring your pet to school day, spluttered Mr. Bright. And Penelope is my pet, said Miranda. Miranda, I should have known you would have to be different. A snake is not a pet, it's a menace, snapped Miss Bloat. Mr. Bright, all these filthy beasts are confiscated. All the girls and boys shouted, no! As the headmistress stuffed their pets into the lost property cupboard, except for Penelope the snake, Miss Bloat had other plans for her. This disgusting thing is coming with me! bellowed the headmistress. With that, she dragged the poor python along the corridor to the office. Where are you going to put Penelope? asked Miranda. In the bin. No! Miss Bloat crammed the snake into her bin and slammed the lid shut. Then she plonked herself down on top so the python couldn't escape. The pin rattled and rattled, but Penelope was trapped. 
A snake in my school, indeed. Get back to your lesson. Downstairs in the classroom, tears rolled down Miranda's cheeks. All the children were so sad to have had their pets taken away. But no one was sadder than Miranda. The little girl feared she would never see Penelope again. At the end of the day, Miranda dashed upstairs to Miss Bloat's office to try to make her change her mind. There was no answer, so Miranda pushed open the door, only to see... Penelope, sitting in the headmistress's chair. Miranda ran towards her pet and gave her a humongous hug. Miss Bloat was nowhere to be seen, so the girl grabbed the key on the desk ran to the lost property cupboard as fast as she could and unlocked it. The animals were overjoyed to be set free. Then Miranda and all the pets slid down Penelope's back into the playground. Whoosh! The children shouted, Hooray! Penelope entertained everybody again. She made a seesaw for them to seesaw on a swing for them to swing on, a wheel for them to roll in, and a skipping rope to skip with. Penelope even helped some of the younger children with the alphabet, although it was hard to do an X. As for Miss Bloat, she had completely disappeared, so Mr Bright was made headmaster. Now the children were allowed to bring in all their favourite animals whenever they wanted. The school became home to every sort of fantastic creature. A giraffe, an ostrich, a tiger, a kangaroo, a crocodile, a grizzly bear, a gorilla, an elephant, and even a colony of penguins. But the star attraction was always Penelope. Though Miranda noticed that there was something different about her python. There was a bulge. A big bulge in the snake's tummy. A bulge in the shape of Miss Bloat. But the little girl thought it was best not to say anything. So the activity we're going to do is to write our own version of this story. So your story might be, there's a cat in my school, there's a tiger in my school, there's a whale in my school, there's a giraffe in my school, there's a dragon in my school. There's a unicorn in my school. So you choose what animal you would like to have join your school. Mr. Bright told all the children in his class it was bring your pet to school day. Now you might like to put in your own teacher's name. So if it was me, if I was the classroom teacher, it would say Mrs. Dickinson had told all the children in her class it was bring your pet to school day. Everyone rushed into the playground to meet the animals. There was a... And then you can start listing some fun animals. So you might say, there was a gorgeous guinea pig, there was a brilliant budgie, there was a torturous tarantula, whatever it is that spikes your fancy. Last to arrive, as usual, was a little girl called Miranda. She was riding on the back of an enormous slithery snake. So your version might look like last to arrive as usual was a little girl called Meredith. She was riding on the back of an enormous long-necked purple giraffe. Me Geraldine, my pet giraffe, announced Meredith. And then you can make up your own story about what adventure you and your pet are going to get up to in the class. I wonder what things could go wrong. See, that's the thing about a narrative. We have to have an introduction and then we have a problem. We solve our problem and then we conclu conclude. So this is our introduction. We're introducing that is bring your pet to school day. We're introducing our pet and then something needs to go wrong. So in There's a Snake in My School, we go and we meet Miss Bloat, who locks up Penelope and all the other pets, and then we have to solve the problem of getting Penelope and freeing her. 
So what else could happen? Well, if there's a giraffe, then maybe my giraffe is too big and she pops up uh, and pops a hole into the ceiling. Maybe she, um, let's see, if it's a dolphin, then they're going to need some water. So maybe she accidentally floods the school. If it's a hamster or a little mouse, then maybe they might get lost because they're so tiny inside the big school. And then you'll have to work out how to solve that problem. So if it was the giraffe popping his head through the ceiling, then maybe then maybe they decide that all schools should be open air schools from now on with no roofs on any classrooms. And if it's a dolphin who floods the classroom, well then maybe lessons should take place beside the swimming pool from now on and we could all swim and have our lessons. That'd be awesome. Um, and maybe if it's the Hams and maybe if the hamster's getting lost, then you could have like itty bitty little maze system with like stop and turn and all these like cute little. Or you could put like a um, a like a GPS detector on the back of your mouse, and that way you can find them. You can do that with like cats and dogs. You can do it by a little like um, pet GPS system. You can put on their collar. It's really cute. And then you can just have the conclusion that there's a snake in my school had. So you can come up with your own conclusion or then you can come up with the conclusion that there's a snake in my school had. Now the children were allowed to bring in all their favourite animals whenever they wanted. The school became home to every sort of fantastic creature. But the star attraction was always, or in my case, the star attraction is always going to be Geraldine the Giraffe. Okay, have fun. I love it when I get to see my students work, so please don't be afraid to send me your work. You can send it to me on Facebook, you can send it to me via email. I'd love to be able to see it because it makes me so happy to see my students work and I will give you some feedback on it and I'll even pop it up on my Facebook site for everybody else to see as well and see how fabulous you are, but I'll enjoy that if you're happy for me, happy for me to do that. Alright, thank you so much for joining me for this lesson. I hope you had some fun with it. I'll see you at the next one.